Today I'm going to be reviewing the perfume The Lock from the Louvre collection from the house of Bolli 1803. I'm going to be giving some introductory information about the company and the collection and their formula and stuff like that. So if you've already watched that from my previous videos, please skip to the review itself. So Bolli 1803 is a very old French apothecary company that existed from uh, 1803, but they actually went away for a while and they were revived by the same uh, people, I think they are actually a couple, um, that also started Sierra Trudon, which is also another revived company um, that went away for a while and they make great candles and I personally love them so I highly recommend that you check them out. Um, the Louvre collection came about when uh, the Louvre Museum went to Bully and said um, please curate a perfume for us, a collection of perfumes for us. And Bully went out and found eight uh, perfumers who are highly revered in their field and they went into um, Louvre uh, and picked eight artworks that inspired them and uh, they made those um, eight perfumes into a collection. So um, one thing to note about all of these perfumes that are produced by Bolli 1803 is their formula. They are all called Eau Triple, kind of like Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum, they're all called Eau Triple. Um, they are water-based as opposed to alcohol-based perfumes that are usually out there and that we're familiar with. So I guess because they're water-based, they are kind of an emulsion. So what's really important before you spray them is that you shake them very vigorously. Um, not just a couple of seconds. I personally do a good 10 second shake before I use them every time. Um, and this is because I've actually seen a difference when I don't give it a shake. Um, the major differences are that first, um, you are not mixing up all of the ingredients properly. Um, so you're not getting the full effect of the notes as intended. Um, second is that the sprayer doesn't seem to work properly, which was actually quite surprising. Um, it didn't seem to spray as well. It would spray in kind of clumps. Um, and when I did uh, shake the bottles, they did seem to work a lot better. So I highly recommend that you um, shake the bottles before you spray them. And that is actually recommended um, in all of these sprayers. And I'm sure they're on those uh, the bottles that they sell as well. So this came as part of one of their dozen um, travel set that they sell on their website. They have another one that is just made up of their main collection. And this is a special one because it includes the Louvre collection. But because there are only eight perfumes to the Louvre collection, um, they also add four from their main collection. And those four scents included in this box set are the Damask Rose, um, Fleur d'Orange, um, Tuberose de Mexique, and Lichen de Ecosse. So those are included in here. So going back to the perfume itself. Um, in French, this painting is called Le Verrou. Um, it means the lock. Um, it's by a, I believe the artist is Fragonard. Um, this artist also did the really, um, the most famous Rococo painting of all time. And it's the swing, it's this lady with a hat and her dress and her legs are up and she's on a swing and her lover or a friend <laughs> is uh, kind of watching her on the swing. Um, I'm not sure if you know that painting, but it is really beautiful and it's by the same artist. So this artist is kind of representing the Rococo era, the kind of, um, you know, the era that you think of when you think of Marie Antoinette, basically. So the painting itself, I 
don't love it. Um, it is a bit scary painting. Um, from a contemporary point of view, it is a little inappropriate. Uh, it basically depicts uh, a lover. I don't really know what kind of relationship they're having, but these two people um, are in a room. Um, the woman is kind of um, in this sort of pose and the man is um, using the lock on the door and maybe they'll have um, some friendly times. I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, but it is a very evocative painting for sure. Um, so to go back to the uh, to the perfume itself, um, first thing that you that really hits you is the fruity notes. And when you read the company information on this perfume, um, they directly relate it to the apples on the table that are in the painting. So it's very fruity. Um, it's If it's an apple, it's a very juicy, very sweet apple. The fruit aspect of this is very, very sweet. And I immediately smell something that smells very much like tuberose to me. Um, and there's, because, and when I smell tuberose, I immediately think of coconutty, uh, tropical kind of um, smells. So that's what comes to me uh, very quickly. That's in the beginning and once it progresses a little bit, um, this one does change quite a bit. Um, I uh, The company um, description of this perfume does include white lilies in it. It's a very subtle white lily. Um, it's not the funeral parlor kind of white lily that you'd smell in like um, Anais Anais or um, the Cartier perfume. I can't uh, remember the name. Baiser Volé or something like that. Um, compared to that, this is quite fresh. It's a very fresh um, white lily and more white floral rather than that kind of um, uh, floralist uh, flower shop shop kind of floral it's very fresh and um, more um, the generic kind of white florals that you uh, smell in white floral, floral floral perfumes it's also very musky um, it's a very sensual musk um, it's not necessarily not veering on the animalic uh, feral um, musk of musk ravager or anything like that um, but it's the kind of sensual musk that evokes skin uh, and not laundry um, it's not laundry type musk it's very um, skin sensual like it, it does make sense if you think about the painting itself um, it starts out very very strong um, and I mention in some of the intros that the progression of these O triples are very interesting that they're very um, you smell all of the aspects in the be in the beginning uh, maybe that's because it's an emulsion you just kind of smell them all at once and as time goes on you'll smell different aspects of the perfume um, at different times and it's very interesting I've never smelled a perfume progress like this um, but in the beginning, it's very strong, but it quickly uh, kind of dies down. This one dies down very, very quickly. It's probably the most gentle um, and the softest in terms of sillage out of the whole collection uh, to me. So um, to kind of summarize what I get out of this perfume, uh, Le Verrou, uh, the lock is that it's a fleshy white floral. You really think of like that thick white petals of tuberose, um, gardenia, and lilies as opposed to kind of like the tender petals of a rose or something like that. It is quite fleshy, it is quite sensual with all the musk, but it does down quite quickly and you really get that kind of fresh lily aspect towards the end, but it's very, very soft. I hope you enjoyed this review and please come back for my other 
um, reviews of the Louvre collection. Thank you.